how to make twitter ads tutorial for beginners hey guys welcome back to the youtube channel in this video i'm going to be showing you how you can get started with twitter ads as a beginner so let's get into it now first off you're going to have to log on to your twitter ads and you might be wondering what's the purpose of twitter ads and are they really going to be helpful how do i set them up what's the entire process well twitter ads are a very simple and easy way to promote any kind of business whether it may be a local business or it may be a international business brand whatever it is you can probably promote it very easily on twitter and the best part about twitter is that you can promote your brand locally as well so you can have a specific reach to a certain location where you can add more targeted ads to the people in your surrounding area so to get started with Twitter ads, you will have to log on to your Twitter account. And once you do that, you're going to click on more over here, and then you're going to click on Twitter ads, and then a new tab will open for you to begin creating your Twitter ad. So I'm going to set up a Twitter ad section. So once you click on Twitter ads, they're going to ask you where you are from. So you're just going to enter the country and the time zone that you will be working from. So you're just going to click on let's go. And once you do that, you're going to choose the objective of your Twitter ad. So it depends on the kind of product or the kind of service or the kind of item that you are looking to promote. Most beginning products, or like if it's a very new product or a very new concept, you might be looking for awareness. So that might be the main purpose of you running Twitter ads. You need to be very clear about what you want from this ad campaign. So if you want to maximize your ad's reach, you're going to definitely go for reach if you want consideration. So if you want to build an audience for your account, if you want people to engage with your account, or if you want to do that, you're going to go for something in the likes of consideration. And then if you want conversion, so if you want people to take action, like purchase an item, click on a link, purchase a like fulfill a survey, download an application, so you're going to have app re-engagement. So Depending on the objective of your campaign, you're going to choose accordingly. So let's say I'm just creating a new business or a new kind of product that I want to launch into the market, then I would definitely go with reach. So I'm just going to select reach over here and I'm going to click on next. And once I do that, you have your basic objective over here, then you can add a campaign name. This is going to be the name for my campaign or I can name this um, food product awareness. And then you have your funding source then you can add your daily budget and the total budget so let's say the total budget for this ad campaign is six thousand dollars and my daily budget is uh fifty dollars like so and then you can also choose a starting time for your campaign so let's say i want this to begin from tomorrow and i want to add a ending time so if this is a product launch or a specific service launch and you want awareness you probably should add a ending time to your campaign like one month so when the product is launched when the hype has reached its peak and ended you probably should end your campaign as well you can later on add this time whenever or end your campaign whenever you want but just to make it simpler you can also add a specific date to make sure that your campaign is ending on time and you have a good estimate of how long you will be running this business now after that you're just going to click on next at the bottom right and then you're going to add your ad group name so you can add whatever new name you want let's say this is going to be food specifications now after that you're going to scroll down and you're going to add your total ad group budget so let's say the total ad group budget is four thousand dollars and then you can add a start and end time and a max reach or reach with engagement so you have two goals so if you want the maximum amount of reach you're going to get your ad to reach as many people as possible or you can go with the reach with engagement so people that are more like retweet your ad or retweet it or like it or reply to your ad you can reach with them but max reach is what is recommended for most people that are looking for product or brand awareness now after that you have your bidding strategy so first off you have auto bid and target cost just look leave it at auto bid don't bother it right now because it's usually um most profitable at auto bid now after that you have your pay by impression so you can automatically optimize your ad frequency or set a custom gap but i like to leave it at automated because that really helps you in getting the most amount of uh, engagement with your viewers or the people that are taking or browsing a look through instagram to actually interact and work with your ad now below that you have your demographics let's say if you are running a sales campaign for aftershave beard oil then you probably want your demographic to be all men but if you're running a 
a kind of ad campaign for hair extensions or nail extensions or lash extensions, you probably want to target women. So depending on your audience, you can choose who you want to set your demographic to. I'm promoting a food product, so I want to promote to all genders, but depending on the product or service, you can target your demographics wisely. And I would recommend make sure you are targeting your demographic accurately because if you don't target your demographic, people that are going to be absolutely uninterested in your actual product or service are going to view your ad and it's going to be wasted on people that were never going to ever purchase your service or purchase your product. Now, after that, you can also add your age range. So uh, usually I do recommend adding an age range. If you have a content in your products, you can add 18 and up, or if you don't, you can leave it at 13 and up, but I like to go with 18 and up. And then you can also add your location. So if you're providing a service, which is a local service, like if you're someone that is running a beauty salon, then you want to add the local location or add the location where you want to browse the like target the most amount of ads at. So if someone from another country is viewing the ads for your beauty parlor or hair salon, it's of no use to you because they are never going to actually travel all the way here to get a haircut. So that is why you want to add the location if this is a physical service that people need to be physically present for. After that, you can also add your language and then you're just going to scroll down into devices. So if you are promoting an application that only works on Android phones, then you want to promote this only on Android phones. If you're running a ad campaign for an application that is only for iOS, then you want to target iOS customers. So make sure you fill these out. This is a food product, so I'm going to leave this. And then you have different targeting features as well. So let's say I want to target people that are searching for food. So I'm just going to select that and I'm going to add diet. Then I want to add McDonald's. So you can add as many keywords as you want and you have different keyword recommendations that you can add. So you can see you get recommendations according to the previous keywords that you add and you can add as many as you possibly can. Make sure they are accurate and fulfill the actual purpose of your ad campaign. They're actually linked to that because keywords help you in targeting people and people that are interested in these kinds of categories would be interested in my product and that is why I'm adding those keywords over here. Now, after that, you also have your follower lookalikes that you can add. So if you have like an ideal customer for your product or service, you can enter them over here to find more customers like them. And then you can also add the interests of your customer. So food and drink, this should be the primary interest of my customer because people that are going to be focusing on food and drink are going to be far more interested in purchasing more food items. So I'm going to select all of these food items. So you can select all of these over here. And after that, you have any movies and TV shows or any kind of events or conversation topics. I'm going to leave that. And then you have your placement. So you have the Twitter ad placement on home timelines, profiles, and search results. So if you want to appear on search results, you can turn that on and turn it on on profiles. I leave it on because I want as much engagement as I possibly can get. So I like to leave this on. Now, after that, you're just going to click on next over here. And once you do that, you're just going to save this as a draft or you can click on launch campaigns to launch your Twitter ad campaign. And that is how simple and easy it is to run your own Twitter ad campaign. And if you take a look at your account, you can actually take a look at the analytics and view your tweet activity. Now, I'm going to click on save as draft and now I'm going to show you guys the Twitter ad manager. So... I have saved this and this is going to be your actual dashboard to monitor your Twitter ad campaign. So you have your ad groups, you have your basic ads, audience and history, and you have a simple little chart to further illustrate the progress or the decline that you have had. And on your right, you have these simple little daily campaign details in keywords or in just a top of the head headlines. So that was it for today. I hope you guys found this video helpful and you're now able to make your own Twitter ads as well. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and I will catch you guys in the next video.